Hi, I'm Nixon. I'm going to make a three-part series on how to set up and host your own DayZ server. In the first part, I'm going to cover the basics just to get the server going with minimal effort. And in the second part, I'm going to show you how to get your server listed in the DayZ launcher, custom launcher, DZSA launcher, as it's called, and a more advanced batch startup script to make a server restart if it fails and so on. And in the third part, I'm going to show you how to change the starting gear of the character, how to customize the loot tables, how mods work, and how to run multiple instances of the server, of the DC server on one physical machine. So let's get started. First off, what you want to do is download the DC server. And it, you can find the DC server under in your Steam. I have uh, a skin on my Steam, but it should still the same be named library. Uh, go to Tools, and then you go to Daisy Server. Press Install Game. I'm going to install this on on my C drive just because, well, it's the default. So press Next. You agree. Let's finish. Then watch it download. There we go. Uh, now you can open your C drive. Go to program files. Search for Steam. Cases here. And Go to Steam Apps, Common. Here you have DC Server <coughs> with all the default things that you need. So, what we're going to start up with is a basic config, uh, and it's this file the server DZ DFG. So, just uh, choose your favorite text editor. Mine is Sublime Text. Uh, and <coughs> I already have it <laughs> open on my other screen, so just bear with me. There we go. And server DC. So here is some basic configuration that gets handed to you by Bohemia. Just to get your server started. So here is the name. And in our case, I'm going to name it Nixon. Yes. Uh, this is the password to join the server, and this password is to log in as an admin whilst you're on the server. Max players, it is self-explanatory. I don't know, I've seen servers with a hundred people, and I guess it's depend it depends on your hardware. Uh, <coughs> the minimal required requirement for DC server is two cores and eight gigs of RAM, I think. So if you have a more beasty machine, you could probably run a hundred players without any significant lag in or so. Uh, if you want to disable in-game communication by voice communication, set this to one. Uh, this is just the audio quality. You can increase it. Uh, this is going to affect the bandwidth that just you require for the server. So if you have a lower bandwidth and want more people, like if I have 60 people, I can probably run the highest quality. If you want more people, you might want to set down the audio quality. Uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, my throat is poor. Uh, disabled third person. Well, it's also pretty explanatory, self-explanatory. Yes, we can disable it. Now you only have first person mode. In this case, we don't do that. Disable crosshair. I think this. I don't know. I always disabled crosshair. It's the it's the physical crosshair. You you don't have to aim with the weapon to get a crosshair if you have this enabled. Uh, server time. Well, this copies the system time. So in my case, it would be thirteen twenty two. The middle of the day, if I start the server now, 
Uh, you could also just enter a time here, like so. Take this time, add it here. So if you want it to start at 17.23 in the night or in the evening, have it like this. Or if you want to start it at 6 o'clock in the morning, do this. Time acceleration. Time acceleration is, well, it's uh, it accelerates the time. So, if I press 1 here, it will accelerate the time by 1. So, if 1 hour in real life will become 2 hours in DC time. So, if I start the server now, it will start at 6 o'clock in the morning. And in 1 hour, it will be 8 o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> so if you don't want any acceleration at all, you have no zero, and you want it like four times faster, you have two, I think. Yeah, accelerate time, multiply time in the game. In this case, this time should be four, 24 times faster than normal. So an entire day would pass in one hour. Uh, for our case, we'll leave it at zero. I don't like acceleration. And this is the night duration, and in our case, started at 6 in the morning, and we don't accelerate time. And the server is going to auto-restart uh, every... I think we're going to set it at every 6 hours, so when the server restarts, it will be, well, in the middle of the day. So we don't have to worry about this, but this is the same thing as the above. When it's night time, the night you can have it so the night time accelerates faster than the daytime. Uh, time persistence. So if the server shuts down, uh, if we enable this, if the server shuts down and the in-game time is like 13:30 or something, when you start it up again, it will continue at 13:30 instead of taking this time again. If you have zero here. Every time you start the server, it's going to start at 6 o'clock in the morning. If you have one, it's going to start wherever it shut down. Uh, guaranteed updates. That's just, I don't know what it is. Uh, login queue, concurrent people. Uh, this is how, I if you restart the server and start it up again, and many people try to join it, it will form a queue with five people at a time, just not stress the server. Uh, so it will let in five people at a time and the queue maximum of 500 people. And if you're really realistic, you can have this the same as the maximum numbers of players because, well, yeah. The instance ID, this is going to, it will affect. Uh, We'll take that later, because we have something called profiles and stuff. Uh, storehouse state. As it says, disable house doors persistent. Uh, usable in case of problem with persistence. La 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 la. This is the mission that it's going to start up when you start the server. The mission is located under here. The missions. Daisy offline dot plus. This folder. Whenever they see is getting an update, so right now it has been updated to 1.05, uh, this folder will be overwritten with new files. Uh, so I highly suggest if you're going to modify stuff, as we're going to go through in the last episode of this series, uh, we will make an, our own copy of this and name it something else. But that we, we'll take that in the third episode. So this is the minimum things you need. Uh, you can put in things like this. Have your Steam port added to this config. To specify what... This is the query port. So if you ever see this uh, Steam query port on, uh, somewhere on the internet, like 
the ECSC launcher it if you want search for your server X server there the steam query port that's this port and the default port number is 2716 run it at that and uh, one thing you can do also is let me just find it uh, and change the respawn time uh, so you have respawn time and all all this is case sensitive so you need to have it a big t whereas it will not work this is the respawn time so if you die and press respawn it's going to take five seconds before you respawn uh, you can also add max IP so if someone connects and they have a higher max ping I mean max so if someone connects and have a higher ping than 250 they will be automatically kicked uh, you can also have some logging I like to have logging because because of reasons uh, so you can shoot uh, between full and short dates the log file uh, you can log the average FPS you can log the memory used by the DAISY server on your hardware how many players are on your server and put everything in this file and this file is going to be created in your profiles profiles folder then we have this parameter as well multi-threaded replication this will uh, enables multi-threaded processing for server replication system number of worker threads is derived by settings of job systems in set daisy settings by max cores and reserved cores parameter if you set this to one it will read from that file from daisy settings.xml that file is this file and it's going to read it from uh, let me see what row is this max cores max cores this is how many cores will be able to use your replication tasks so in my case My CPU has this many cores, or it has eight cores but sixteen threads. So I can maximum use sixteen threads, right? Once I can like use maximum of eight cores, reserve this four or something. That should be okay. You don't want to use all your cores. And count for PS4 and Xbox one you don't you don't need to worry about those if you're on a PC let's save that file and let's save this file there we go now you probably wonder how to start the server and we're not done here uh, you will need after you've made this configuration file you will need to make a startup script and the most simplest way you can start a script is just to make a new file, new text file, and name it like start.bat. Stands for batch, is the core programming language. No, it's not the core programming language, but uh, well, if you open command prompt, everything you type here is batch, right? Uh, and this you saw me name it from txt but <coughs> you probably don't have the dot txt visible what you will have to do is go to view options view and then uncheck this box hide extensions for known file types and okay 
now you can see if I just enable it there is now we just named start well this isn't going to work so we'll show this and in your start VAT use whatever text editor you want write echo off and then you will write start and you can then write like this uh, sorry I just have to check something uh, like daisy server of that you will set wait this will make uh, the command prompt window that's going to pop up wait for for the server to like close down essentially uh, first off we need to do this I forgot it sorry we need to cd stands for I don't know what it stands for but go to this directory okay so we cd to this path which is the path the root folder for the server then we can take this and the whole name dot exe wait for that one then we take the parameters so in our case config and the config is this one the server dot dz server dot cfg then we specify a profile and the profile name can be whatever you want. So we're just going to call this Nixon. Tut. Then we specify a port for the server to run on. I'm going to show you later how to open the ports on your computer. The port we will be using is 2302. That's the standard AC port. And then you can add more parameters. So if you want, like, do logs. This is when you have this parameter, you will be logging, and you can log some further and some more. This is the general log. This is like admin stuff log. If you are connected as an Archon admin or in game admin, and stuff you do will be logged in, will be logged now if you have this enabled. And net log is the network log. Uh, freeze check. It essentially checks if the server freezes and try to restart it. And CPU count how many cores the server can use. And in my case, I'm going to set it to like every core on my system. Uh, and if you want to run mods, you will place it here as well. So dash mod colon and remember we are already cd to this directory to this directory if you have a mod i'm just going to fake it right now but i'm going to go in depth in the next part so if we have a mod called skynet example we'll place that here mod. so this is what you need start the server the bare essentials now our configuration of the server is complete. What we need to do now is open some ports for the server to communicate. So remember this script enable this port v02 and in our uh, server config said that the steam query port is 270 7016 those two ports we're going to need to open but there's a simpler way to do it in windows in windows you have your windows defender firewall go to advanced settings and on inbound make a new rule up here and we'll choose a program instead of a port program the path path is obviously our path to apps common dc server and this this is the exe file we 
we can go ahead and save this path also because we're going to make another rule. Take this one. Next, allow the communication on all realms and name it like DC server. I can't even spell server in or inbound. Finish. Go to outbound rule program this path press open and the same exe file for this uh, allow the communication on all realms and they see server out now now windows has uh, opened all the push for the DC server now you don't need to do anything. If you want to change the port in the future, you can just change it here and Windows will automatically detect it. It, it will let through all communications to this file. Uh, there we go. Windows is open network-wise and you have a basic configuration. Now we will need to open ports in our firewall. And this, my firewall is a bit special. You don't have this firewall typically at your home. Uh, so I don't know how helpful this will be. But the basics are all the same in all firewalls. You probably have something called NOT or put forwarding or virtual IP. So in my case, I have something called NOT. And what we want to do is add a new rule from our WAN interface this is the internet basically on both TCP and UDP both protocols because the voice is using UDP and Steam query port is UDP. Uh, and the destination is your PC's IP address so in my case open a CMD if you take the start menu type CMD find your IP address like this there you go my IP is this this is the local IP of my computer another way of showing it is to right click on this icon open network internet go to Ethernet change adapter options and find your network card, press status, details. Go. That's the same IP as here. See? Good. And that's on my Skynet kind of private or single host. My address was 10122. And the port. Now we have two ports that need to be open so either we can make two rules we first make the first rule it's that port and we'll <laughs> I, I forgot this my wall is pretty advanced okay so let's just check this one this says like so and so and the target is 101022 and this port is so the incoming I will have to write this down so here's your firewall it's a wall and here you have the internet. Nice colors too. There's internet. And people are all, all the people that want to play on your server is here. There's their, their keyboards and their things. They want to go through the firewall. Okay, so they want to go through at port 2302. And your PC which is inside there 
this is your PC with the DC server running. Right? This, in my case, this PC has 10, 10, 2, 2. This is the IP. And they will want to communicate this PC via this port. So, in my case, in the firewall, destination. Destination is the internet. This is the VAN. This side of the firewall is called VON. This side of the firewall is called LAN. Local area network, wide area network. So the destination is VON. I think we want it that way. The port is 2302. So, colon. 2302. And then the redirect target is my local computer, so that means that it can communicate that way on this port, right? Uh, so close that one, and actually destroy that rule, so I will make a copy of it instead. 2302, redirect this one, and the O2. There we go. We will just create this rule now. Fine. So here we have this rule from the source address, it doesn't matter, just on this interface. And to the destination 2302 with this IP. Yes. I'm sorry if I'm confusing you. Well, now the port. 2302 is open and we needed two one more port. We need 27016 as well. Because that's the Steam Core port. And it's a pass through. This is nothing new. As I said this is this firewall is advanced. So now we have opened the port in the firewall, or in the router, or gateway, or whatever you call it. We have opened the ports on Windows, and we have the server configured, ready to run. And now it should not just be a matter of starting it. This is going to be a problem for me, because in my network I already have a DC server up and running. I might actually need to close that one. Give me a second and I close it. There. Not open anymore. So, start the server. Damn it. <laughs> so, I see what I did wrong here. Did the first part, start DC server. Have it in comma, commas. Or Server is loading, and it's about to start. Now this server is going to take read the uh, read the missions and take all the configuration that you've done. Hopefully, create a profile as well. Didn't. Because I misspelled it. Profiles an S. Okay, so let's just do that. Save. And start. Now you see we have a folder here. And this is all the files that the server is using right now when it's started. If we look take a look at this file, this is the log file for for the server. It's all the things that the server is doing. Like spawn animals and stuff. And you have the server log. This is basically a copy of this log. 
almost and uh, have this one the battle life folder this is an important folder actually if you want to be able to use archon tool archon like in probably you will be have, have to be familiarized with it if you want to manage your server how to use archon tool well archon tool is the like an admin tool log into your server and shut it down or kick players and ban players and stuff like that uh, first off we need a configuration file in this battle eye folder to be able for it to work copy one of my files here and i'm sorry but you have to see this uh, this is the password able to use archon and restrict archon you will have as a zero if you set it, set it to one you will not be able to kick or ban players you will only be able to watch what's happening on the server not do any commands <coughs> if you have zero there now if you start the server that lie will read this configuration See? now it's active now it reads this com configuration and you are able to but the Orkin tool is something I will show in another video right now the server is up and running and you can test it the Let's go. There we go. So the server, looking community. And do you remember what we named it? We renamed it. And we can probably just filter by ping. So it seems that I failed somewhere. It's probably when you don't, s when it looks like your server is up and running, but you don't see the p the server. It's probably one of the ports that is disabled. Let me just. Uh, I'll be back in uh, one second. Okay, I'm back and it seems that my firewall was uh, doing something weird I just recreated the firewall rule and everything started working now you can see you can do and you can take your ip address like search for ip number and here's your local ip number of your internet this is like the well it's your house it's a number for your house, basically. Then colon, and then remember the Steam query port that we configured. Uh, Take that and X server.
Now we can check it again in in game also to see that we're actually able to connect to it. Because it would be really good to be able to connect to it. Yes, so it's. Here it is, and we are able to play on it. Hey, get that. Can throw apples. Or this. Well, that's it. Um, you're now able to play on a server that you're hosted. So what we've done is download the server from the Steam Workshop? No, not the Steam Workshop. We downloaded a server from Steam. We set up a basic configuration file and a basic startup script. We configured the Windows firewall and we configured the uh, forwarding in our router as well. So in the next episode, I will be going through the process of making it appear in the custom DZ launcher. This one, probably seen it before. I look. Uh, but we wanted to appear with mods, and uh, I'm also going to show you how to make a advanced batch script start the server. That's all for me right now, and I see you in the next video.